This podcast is brought to you by our original I Am a Sewing Machine t-shirt. If you want to support Sewing Out Loud and tell the world that you are a sewing machine, go to sewhere.com slash I Am a Sewing Machine and use code MACHINE to get 10% off your t-shirt. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today I have some questions for mom. So I thought that I would just bring them on her for a podcast episode. And you all can know what it's like to have ZD at your disposal. Oh my gosh. If you um if you need her. So, okay. I'm, I'm, ass- I'm assuming this is about hats. <laughs> Am I close? No, 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 no. This is oh, just something it's else. Just questions. You don't oh, even know. I've written down the wrong nope, thing. Nope. It's not a not a single I have, thing. I have to retitle my notes. Not a single thing about hats. Okay. okay. I so, have to adjust my microphone. Hold on a second. I hope I don't make a terrible noise for anyone. All right. Um, okay. You just saw those fabrics that I brought up here. I did. So I bought some fabrics from LA Finch Fabrics. Isn't it fabrics. funny how my eyes go, what is that? fabric. What is that? What is it? I bought some stuff from LA Finch that came in the mail. And then I, I have some stuff from Joanne here, too. Joanne's or whatever. It's Joe. Is Joanne's. it Joanne? It's Joanne. But then some people are like Joanne Fabrics. I don't know. Whatever. You know, it's kind of a weird name for I a store. I thought it was Joanne's. Okay. I'm looking it up. So I have these. Go look on the bag right there of fabric. Okay. So I have these fabrics. I have a dark purple corduroy. Okay. A dark purple stretch corduroy. Okay. It says, just says Joanne. Yeah. I saw it. See. Told you. Okay. So it's Joanne all right, I've got a dark purple corduroy. I've got a pink stretch denim. Okay, those were from Joanne. And then I have, that's a tinsel uh, denim with like a terry backing. And then three stretch twills. One is like this goldenrod color, white and black. Okay, I need to pre-wash all these fabrics. Mallory's... Like animal fabric is stretch twill right now. Yeah, I am. I swear. It is. It is my. It like I really like stretch twill. I just think it's a good fabric. Okay, so I got all these fabrics and they're all different colors. They got different values, different hues, and everything. Do you think I can throw them all in the wash with Synthropol and they'd be safe, or would you divide them out? I would like divide light and dark probably. Just light and dark. But like, Ooh, and then the white. The white. Would you do the white all on its own? I, I'd probably do the white on its own. Uh, and you know what I put it on? <laughs> yeah. Now I don't know what your washing machine says, but mine has something called a short wash. I think there's an express wash. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. I, I'm sure. So you, each think that, you think that? You think that's what? That's what I do most of mine on because I don't want them like washed to death. Right. I just want them saturated with the right temperature of water that uh-huh. I'm going to saturate them with later after I make them a garment. And then I want them dried, like I'm going to dry them as a garment. Yeah, okay. So and, and but I do use Synthropol. Yeah, tell the people what Synthropol is. It is I don't know if it's a detergent or a soap or a, it's a solvent. And it has certain things in it. I know one of the things it has in it actually is formaldehyde. But it is to it is a dye catcher. Synthropol detergent is something that so, so they say detergent Google says. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. But anyway. <laughs> but but so it's a dye catcher. Uh huh. So whenever I dye anything or I pre-wash, I use the Synthropol, and um, what it does, what it, part of what it does for the dye, not are the pre-dye wash, right, right? Is it takes out anything on the fabric that would prevent the dye from penetrating. And it takes out excess dye that didn't. And it takes out, but I'm talking right. like pre-dye. Oh, like okay. You're okay. thinking maybe that I might see what you're saying. Right. I mean, although I do dye things that are prints and colors. But, um, so that's what it does. Okay. So it, you know, and I like, like I said, I like to pre-wash with it. Have I not pre-washed with it? Yeah, I have not pre-washed so, with it before, but I like to. So even though Synthropol does this, you wouldn't mix your white with your black and all not that. Not white and black. I just wanted now, to take a shortcut. Now, sometimes when things are like all bright colors, like say I'll have a bunch of, oh, 
spandex. And yeah. it's like, this is bright and blue and this and this is this and this. Is. I just put them all in together. Yeah. I figure they've been in all the dye vats already. <laughs> Right. Okay. They've been in forty-two dye vats as it was. So. so I need to do. I need to do a separate thing. All right. I'll do that. It, it, well, the thing is, here's the other thing. You've got a lot of yardage there, and yeah. you have those long pieces, and they will tie themselves up. Right. Knots. No, so I know you're that. You're off. You're yeah, better off, off not doing that. Also. Okay. Then this stretch corduroy over here. Oh my gosh! I didn't know there was another one. Okay. Well, I told. I said that. I said that earlier, right here. Right I didn't here. know you were going to ask me about all yeah, of it. Yeah. So I got a question about it. Can I dry that yeah. in the dryer? Yeah, that's what I do. That's what you do? I dry it almost to dry, take well, it out, shake it out, it. and hang it, okay. and put a fan on it. Yeah. So yeah. do you know why I put a fan on it? Why do you put a fan on it? Okay, so the what gets rid of moisture is air going through fibers, uh-huh. right? It, it carries the moisture away. So the faster it dries like that, the more likely the any wrinkles or anything will fall out. I see. So that's I why see. I put a fan on it. Yeah. And it's a cold fan. It's just in the it's, room. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's not like hot mm-hmm. or anything. Right. So you think that I can pre-wash this stretch corduroy. It's so cool, guys. It's purple stretch right. corduroy. Is it cool or what? No. That, so I'll that's pre-wash how it and I've dry always it. done stretch corduroy is, and I, you don't iron it. Never. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you never iron it. No. If you, if you ever are going to do anything with corduroy, you steam from the back side. Okay. And you steam. You yeah, don't okay. press. I don't think. I think I've made something with corduroy before, but it was like a kid's garment. Yeah. And I don't, whatever. Corduroy is kind of, usually doesn't wrinkle real bad. Well, especially like, stretchy stuff. Well, no. Right? You know? No, I've never had, and even the old days, cotton corduroy, I never had much trouble with it. It's, you know, I had to take it out of the dryer right away or take it out almost dry and hang it. Okay. Okay, well that's good to know. I remember having. I do a lot of taking out almost. Yeah, dry you hanging. you do a lot of that. Yeah. Yes, that is a very ZD laundry well, habit. I, I mean, it works, wind right? Up not having to press, especially like t-shirts. It just kills me when somebody has on this really neat t-shirt and it's all crumpled up. Well, you know, I'm what? like, oh, that you okay. know. Speaking of a bunch of yardage getting tied around stuff right. okay you know i have that like pussy bow blouse uh-huh. although is it technically a pussy bow blouse because is a pussy bow blouse it does it go to like a v no i think anything with a bow at the anything neck with is a bow a at bow. the neck okay that that's me talking to you from like the 50s 60s okay so again things get redefined yeah, so mine yeah. mine is up you know, around the neck. I would call it's that a pussy a bow. Okay. That's what another friend yeah. called it. But I have to put that in like a little lingerie bag because the ties mm-hmm. are like. No. What are, they're anything. Like three do you have feet anything? That, <laughs> or, you know, sometimes if something has a like wop. Uh, exposed zipper and it's yeah, out there. I yeah. put it in the bag so mm-hmm. it doesn't get on other things. Right. Um. I'm I'm pretty well, particular I, about that. I was, you know, with this with this shirt right. that I spent a bunch of time making and everything. You know, I'm like, oh, these ties would get wrapped around something and then I even so, pull even it so, out. I and... even have some t-shirts that, like, for some reason, the sleeves. Oh yeah. Like to get tie they're they seem to be longer. I don't uh-huh. know if it's the fabric, and I will bag them for some reason. Okay. Um. So, and you will surge the ends of all of those. Yeah, so I'm going to surge. Yes, that's so why they're up So the here. reason you're surging is not only because they'll ravel, but because the raveling can cause strings, and that can get caught around the other fabric, and it can caught around an agitator, anything else. So you want to make sure that they're finished some way, somehow. Okay, the other thing about the surging, so how we finish our fabrics is I surge the two cut ends, and then I wash it. As a piece of fabric, mm-hmm. I've heard about a lot of people. You surge them together. No, or oh, okay. no. So I some people surge, surge them together, together, so they're making this into loop. a tube. I've okay. I tried that once, and it didn't work for me. Yeah, but I heard it, or somehow got it from like a quilting yeah source, and I'm like, so were they not like using all this fabric that I use? Because sometimes you know. Quilters aren't using the, a lot of yardage. Yeah, they use a smaller they, on amount. On the back of a quilt, maybe. But, you know, a lot of times they're losing, using a yard and a half of this and a yard and a half. And a lot of, sometimes I'm I'm washing four yards. Well, the thing about that is I'm going to have to cut it anyway because a lot of times I do dry it and then press it yeah. before then cutting my garment out. So it's like i got to cut it again. Well, Why if you're going to cut you know, it, I would cut it before I 
that would be a problem. I would cut it before I washed it if I w- knew no, I was. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, oh. you surge it into a loop and you have oh. to cut it. Yes, you have to cut open. it open. Right. So uh, I, <laughs> I, like I said, I tried it. It didn't. I only it tried it like it once. It was a hundred years ago. It didn't make me happy. It didn't make me happy. I felt like it took longer to dry. Yeah. A, I, it, I, I now I always had like high capacity. Uh huh. You know, machines too. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Yes. No. If it if it works for now, you. Yeah. Here's the other thing too. If people are like putting stuff, pre-washing it, and like washing the crap out of it, it doesn't need that. It needs to be like I said, totally permeated with the water at the temperature you're going right. to wash it out later, and then dried in the same manner. Yeah. That's it, all. It doesn't need to be like washed to death. It doesn't need to be cleaned if you got it for like clean, clean, clean. Right. Like you don't have to put in a ton of detergent. No, oh, no. Derek puts way too much detergent. Like, in. like I said, I put in that cap full of synthetol. Of yeah, yeah. Because unless now, if you've gotten fabric from somewhere else, and the cap else, is the size you know. of the cap, like on a tiny vinegar bottle. This yeah. is not like a big, huge detergent, detergent cap, cap full. Right. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a teaspoon or table. I guess it's a tablespoon. It does full. look like our our right. thing looks like a pitcher of, or pitcher of a thing it looks of like white a, vinegar. It looks like yeah. a vinegar bottle. It does. Yeah. I mean, it's like a tablespoon right. per how many gallons of water. Several, okay, and yeah. then just in case you don't have a serger and you're like, well, I want to pre-wash right. my fabrics, you can do two lines of straight stitches right. on the edges of your cut fabric and then wash them and right. they will not ravel. And like mom says, we don't want them to ravel for a lot of reasons. So, Okay, well, let's take a little break and I'll come back and ask you my other questions. Okay, this ad spot is a chance for me to brag a bit. I am really proud of my I Am A Sewing Machine shirt design. The design incorporates elements of a sewing machine like a spool, a threaded needle, and a knob all within the text that tells the world that you are a sewing machine. Made from a super soft cotton and printed here in Columbia, Missouri, our I Am A Sewing Machine t-shirt is available sizes small to 4XL. And we've included garment measurements in the product description so you can get the perfect fit. It's the perfect gift for yourself or any other sewing machines in your life. The proceeds go to supporting this podcast. And you can get 10% off when you go to sewhere.com slash I am a sewing machine and use the code MACHINE, all caps. Tell Tell the the world world that that you are are a sewing sewing machine. machine. Sew, 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 sewing out loud. And we're back. Okay, I want to walk, I want you to walk me through a little adjustment. Yeah, take a look at that. So I made a blouse in its Vogue pattern V9029, 9029, and I really like it. And it's that, it's that pussy bow blouse that I just mentioned earlier in this podcast. Okay, (laughs) but I'm wearing it and it fits it fits fine in the bust, fits fine in like the, you know, hip area and the abdomen area. And I made it out of a really drapey fabric. So it looks fine, but the sleeves are a bit wide, like wide set. Yeah, I want to look at it on you again, too. Okay. Because, you know, it is a woman fabric and it's meant to be drapey and maybe it's supposed to look like that and you're just not used to it. But I will take but, what you're saying. Okay, okay. you're like, l- right. l- there's your caveat. Right, okay, right, right, I right. agree. Right. Because I'm not I'm not married to this idea, but I wanted to walk through the adjustment I want to make and see if you think it's the way I would go about this. Okay. okay? So I want you to check my work before I go to do this. So I, let's pretend, I think I wear a size 18. So... It fits me in the bust and the abdomen area, right. but I think I want to size down at the shoulders. Also, the sleeves are, like, I think way too long on me. Like, I know they're supposed to be drapey, but there's a lot of there's a lot of drape there. This is a very right. 70s kind of looking shirt, right? Like, Yeah, probably. The, the one yeah. with, like, the ruffle or the flounce yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, so, anyway... I want to size down at the shoulder, and I'm like, oh, cool. I'll get a smaller sleeve, too. I'll get a short, like, the sol- the smaller sleeve will probably be a little shorter. And you don't mind if it's not as big, like, in the, um, around. Well, like around, around no, around arm. the bust. Oh, around the arm. arm. Oh, no, there's plenty of there's room. Plenty. There's okay. There's got to be, like, yeah. plenty of room. Now, I could double check, but, yeah. It's, yeah, I would measure it. Yes, right. yes. But um, I like the length of the shirt, 
you know, I tucked it into like a pair of jeans uh-huh. and it wasn't like coming out or anything like that, you know. So so if I keep the larger size basically like from the bust down, then like I think I'll be happy. And then I'm just going to blend up into the size what I what I want to do is I want to blend up into the size 16 arm size and shoulder yeah, area. Yeah, that's what I would do. And that would be okay. Right. So then I'll get the size 16 collar. Right. I'll get, you know, right. the size Everything, 16 sleeve. Right. You'll just be a size smaller at the top. Okay. Which so is what you like. You sometimes want. Sometimes I feel like, like this is a, this, sometimes I feel like people think that full bust adjustments are like these crazy, crazy, crazy things. But like on some patterns like this one. Right. Where the seam runs from the shoulder to the hem. Like yes. that, I feel like it's a little easier. Like, well, it is. The princess it, seam is always easier. The more seams you have in a garment, right. the better sh- they're going to fit your shape. Okay. So that's what I – now, and I think it's a two-piece. Is it a two-piece sleeve? Can we tell? I can't – I should, like, be able to remember that, but maybe not. Um, but if I want to shorten well, that any more – I can't see that. It looks okay. like a one-piece. No, yeah. you're, you're – you, I think you're right. I think one it's a one-piece sleeve. Yeah. I don't see any reason for it to be a two-piece sleeve. It's not no. a fitted sleeve. No. Um, but, yeah, so you think you think I'm okay just yeah. going going down that far and just blending in there. I don't have to, like, slash and have spread to, the well, pattern. Well, here's the, here's the thing. I, I, I mean, I question where the arm size is and where your bust is. Yeah. Okay. Because if you make your arm size smaller, it could take out some of your bust room. Mm-hmm. So that's what I question. So I need to double check that. Well. Before before making right. the final decision. If you, you know, it's funny because on this pattern they have a model and she's wearing the, the shirt and it's of a print that's, Basically, in a grid pattern. It's kind of stripey, but well, it's, it's a hound's it's, tooth. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. kind of a grid type pattern. So, and you can see where it comes over the bust that it that's a curve there by uh-huh. just looking at it. Uh huh. So they've are they've added some bulk at the bust, which is what, what it's you supposed would to expect. do. Yeah. Right. Um, and that it looks like it's right above. It looks like the arm's eye is right above where that curve stops by this. So you're telling me to be careful. I, I and would not just take, really, I would just not take anything out of my bust. I think you'll be sorry. So if I want to have the size 16 arm side though, so I can right. have my smaller size uh, sleeve. Yes. You know, you go on. Well, generally <laughs> the arm side is above the is the above bust measurement. Right. 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 But this is a relaxed, a little bit of a relaxed <laughs> fit. So I, w- I would just check it out. I would just make sure that I'm not cutting myself too briefly. Not taking out any. Yeah, not taking out bust room. Right. Because, like I said, the arm size is generally the above the bust measure. Okay, but if I wanted to have that size 16 arm size, couldn't I, like, trace that curve and kind of transfer it? Sort of like it would almost be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so in order right. to, so if I did want that smaller sleeve, right. you know, you I can just make bring, sure. You can always bring that up a little bit and do the, right. Right. So you bring the bottom of the arm eye up a, a uh-huh. tad probably to get the size 16. So that the arm eye gets smaller, but that the width of the pattern right. at the, the width, bust the area. The width ac- across the chest does uh-huh. not get smaller. Yeah, because it's, I think it's. It's pretty. It's pretty comfortable, and it's not bad. What's so funny like is if that was ready to wear, you'd think it was a great fit. No, I know. I know. I'm getting really picky. Actually, I've also thought about though, just keeping the size 18, and shortening the sleeve by like one inch. It's just a little. I feel like it's just a right. little much. I, you know, I know people like long sleeves, and I think they look really nice. They so get in my way, and I can't stand uh, yeah. that. I can't stand for it to like to like be up under my arm hand when I'm like you know, on the computer or something. Well, it's got that cuff, so uh-huh. it kind of keeps them out of the way. But I agree. Okay, I, this is where I go back and forth because you know I made that cape right, right that I love. Okay, mm-hmm. but that doesn't really work with short sleeves. 
right? Okay, because like my well, arms are bare. I am such bare. a three quarter length girl. Like, I know, it's but hard it, for me. To, uh, this this yeah. is part. This is exactly like I I am struggling with this exactly as I go to right. make these shirts because I am not a big fan of long sleeves either. Right. In fact, a lot of my like long sleeve shirts or button ups like this I'll end up rolling up well that's what I mean the you, sleeves, you can also you know? roll them up right and then roll them back down yeah there you go but I want to um I made that cape and it's like okay well then I have to wear my short sleeve shirt or maybe like my elbow length shirt and then I have to wear a long sleeve cardigan and then I can wear my cape for it to be you okay in the brisk you, so, weather so you think oh oh you mean because Whereas, you want your own as covered. opposed to yeah okay. as opposed to wearing my short sleeve or my right. you know whatever sleeve shirt and like you know a long sleeve jacket right. outside which covers well, my arms you, you know you know the fashion of the sleeve that rolls up with the tab on it that holds it yes. up yes you know I think I think that that came into play because People didn't like the People long sleeves, like right? Okay, I don't. So they don't offer that on this pattern. They do on that shirt dress, and the sleeve on this is a little bit more belled. You know, it's mm-hmm. po- it's supposed to be a little poof there, right. yeah, at the end. So I'm like, okay, I see that this shirt is not quite meant, you know. So to the, be and this has this has buttons at the cuff, right? Yeah, two buttons. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. This is the one where was that continuous lap? That I, I hadn't done before, and I was just like, okay, mm-hmm. I trust you, Vogue, and I did it, and it worked out really nicely. But anyway, uh, okay, so I think that I think that I can proceed. I'll tell you what, though. It'd be a lot easier just to leave it the one size. Yeah, just shorten the sleeve and say screw it. I'm like, well, maybe I'll start weightlifting again, and my shoulders right. will get big, and I will just have the space in there, and I don't have to worry. But yeah, well, no. there are a lot of shirts I can't wear that won't go over my forearms. Yes. You know, they won't. You I bought, can't push them up anymore. You bought me that um, workout jacket that I really like, right. but it won't. I know. what. Ca- it will I not mean, go over my forearms. Okay, it's a workout jacket. It should have room for I mean, muscles it's, in it's your like, arms. It's like stretchy, yeah. but apparently I just have gigantic, you know, forearms for yeah. that well, uh, it's just size. Muscles. We're just yeah. so muscular. Oh, yeah. What can it. you do? Let's develop muscles. Okay. I think that might be the end of my questions. Um, I'll put a picture of this pattern. I, I, liked, the, I liked the pattern okay. Um, and I bought like a stretch crepe kind of. Uh-huh. To make it yes. out of. So it's comfortable. I think I was there. I think you were there. I bought a couple of, you know, stretch crepes. And actually, I recently wore it. I was, I was so proud because I had these ginger jeans in a tub of shame from like three years ago that I cut out. And I had not put together because they were size 8. And I was not fitting into the size 8. And I have another pair of size 8s that I had put together. So I've been losing a little weight. And I put on the... Right. And this was such a good... I'm, like, so glad I saved those jeans. Right. Because they're actually really worn out. Like, a lot of the stitching is, you know, I need, I need to mend them. Like, they're not really in a wearable state. But but I got to but use them. But they're Muslim. <laughs> yeah, I got to use them as a sizing garment, you know. And so I was really glad that I kept them, even though they're kind of in a state of disrepair. Um, because I got to try them on. I was like, okay, good to wear the you size 8. This. Yeah. Yes. Well, actually, that happened. That's one of the reasons I cut out the size 8 is we were teaching ginger jeans. And my first pair was a size 10. And it was recently, like, I, I think it was like nine months after Zelda was born. And then I was like, you know, these are getting a little big, but don't quite know if I can go down to size eight. And a customer was making a size eight. And I was like, can I try on your jeans? Right. So it was really handy to <laughs> be able to have those sizing garments. So if you have, if you are friends with people who are many different sizes and also like to sew, you guys can try on each other's clothes. And then you don't have to make a muslin. That's right. Necessarily uh, for um, the clothing. You know, that's what um, Judy, our old, manager our regional sales manager she said that when she worked in a sewing store and they sold stretch and sew that the biggest thing was making a sample right of every size right that people, people could try. try on and that's what uh norma at orange lingerie does that's why like her workshops are so costly i believe is that she brings a full size range of bras, bras. with yeah. her so that's not just large medium small right you know whatever it's 32 A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right. you know, uh, 34 A, B, C, D, you know, right. <laughs> for uh, 36, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why it gets um, so costly, but I think it'd be worth it. Anyway, okay, well, thank you all for listening to the questions that I had for Zini, and we will um, 
be back in your ears next week. Thank you to all of you who've been listening. It's four years now. Wow, that's right. We started four Some years ago. Some of you have been listening and to us for four so years. It was 2000, January of 2016. Nuts. Wow. Just 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, so we're finishing our right. fourth year. Right. We're starting our fifth year. Right. We've However done four you want to look at it. Right. No, I didn't. I it's didn't, our fourth year anniversary. I just couldn't believe it. So thank you all for listening. We appreciate it. We love talking Happy to you. Happy anniversary, Mallory. Happy anniversary, Mom. Uh, we love to... Uh, to talk to you about sewing. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you to everyone who emails us, too. It's a lot of fun. That's right. Yeah. And we did look it up at one time, and I did not start saying so long and so happy till about the 11th episode, I think. Yeah, we it was a few months out. in. Yeah, we yeah, figured it out. Yeah, it was kind of inconsistent, and then... We adopted it because Miller goes, I think I like that. And I go, there we go. That's a good sign off. So, so long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.